Hello everyone. So welcome to my course on multiple integration. Today we will see some of the nice applications of double integration. Well, we have already seen in my previous lecture the applications of double integration. Some of the application like it help us to find area of a region. It also help us to find average value of a function. It also help us to find the volume. Volume of what? Volume of a surface above some surface say z equal to f of x y and above the region. So that volume. that also you can find using double integration so this three application we have already seen but it also help us to find this quantities okay so this you must have already seen in your physics class but still i'll be telling the definition the formulas that involves double integration and i'll be taking couple of examples and in that examples i will tell you some tricks which one should keep in mind which will make your job easier okay so there is a nice argument of symmetry that will help you out So the first, these are the things that we are going to see: mass of an object, first moments, and hence center of mass, centroid, second moments, and moment of inertia, and finally radius of gyration. So now let's see the topic one by one. Now how to find a mass of an object using double integration? Okay, so suppose if you have some region over here whose mass you are supposed to find. Okay, now suppose given any point x comma y, given a point over here. let rho of x comma y rho of x comma y let this represents the density density at a point x comma y okay so given a point rho of x y will represent the density given a point rho of x y will represent density so as you keep on changing the points you have the densities at different different points now once the density is given to you you can you integrate the density over the region r then this quantity is nothing but the mass of this region okay so this is how you find the mass of an object or mass of a region or mass of a lamina or mass of a plate these are the different different terms you will see okay so and to prove this one use is riemann sum but i won't be going into that detail so this is the formula to find the mass simply integrate the density you get the mass okay now let's go for the second point first moments and center of mass so here is the center of mass notion so these are the three ways you can have a look at the center of mass so it is what it's a point in the region where when you apply the force it will lead to the linear change in acceleration not the angular change in the acceleration okay this is that point which is which call which we call as a center of mass statistically it is the mean location of the distribution of a mass okay so you have a distribution of a mass you look for the point where you have the mean distribution okay or it is a unique point where the weighted relative position of the distributed mass sums to zero so these are the three things you will see whenever you search for center of mass this is the standard definition but these two things are good to imagine what that point is okay now once we have this definition question is how do we find that point okay so finding that point is important so to find that point integration or the calculus helps you okay so like if you are in region which is in r2 the region r is in r2 so we will have x bar comma y bar and if what is this the formula is it is nothing but m suffix y upon m and m suffix m upon m now what is my m suffix y it is defined as you integrate here you have x here you have y so you take x into rho of x y da where rho is nothing but the density and what is your mx how to keep in mind it's opposite so when you have x over here you take y into rho of xy da so density will be given to you x and y you multiply over here you get my and mx this my and mx are called as first moments so once you have the first moments and the mass when you do the division you get the center of mass okay so this is how double integration helps you to find the center of mass okay now let's see an example so that this concept will be more clear so here is the question you need to find center of mass of a thin plate which is bounded by these two curves and at each point this is what the density is so what is the first step so the first step you is to sketch the region okay so let's sketch the region over here so y equal to 1 is this line y equal to 1 passing through 1 y equal to x square is this parabola in the upward direction this is y equal to x square so okay good so we have a region with us so this is the region we have 
and we want to find its center of mass. Now, as you can see, this figure is symmetric about y axis. Since this is symmetric about y axis, we know that its x bar has to be zero. That means what your center of mass will lie on y axis since it is symmetric about y axis. It is the mean distribution, right? It is the mean location of the distribution of masses. So obviously, since this is symmetric about y axis, your center of mass will lie on y axis and hence by symmetricity, the reason will be by symmetricity of region, we have x bar equal to zero. That means the center of mass will lie on y axis. So if you observe this region carefully, you will reduce your job. I mean, you can find x bar explicitly with the formula, still it will come out to be zero. Okay, so this helps a lot. For example, suppose if you have a triangle, say one, one, this is x plus y equal to one. Now here, if I want to find the center of mass, now you can see that this region is symmetric about y equal to x line. When you do the symmetric, you do the reflection along this line, you get the same region. So this is symmetric along y equal to x line. So what do I have from here is, I know that my center of mass will lie on this line over here. Over here, my center of mass will lie. That means what I will only find either x bar or y bar, whichever the calculation is easy. And once you have one of the component, other component has to be seen. So once you have such nice, nice regions, by doing this observation, you can really reduce your job. Okay, so always draw the region and try to reduce your calculations. Okay, that was one thing. Now, once I have X bar, I want to find Y bar. Okay, so what is my Y bar? It is nothing but MX upon M. So for that, I need to find M first of all. Now, what is M? It is double integration of density into DA over the region R. Okay, now we need to choose order of integration. Which order of integration we will choose? whichever you choose doesn't matter so let me choose dy dx y plus 1 and here you have dy dx so what are the limits of y how do you find the limits of y you draw the line parallel to y axis so it is entering from parabola and leaving from the line so y is starting from x square going till 1 and when you project this this is minus 1 and 1 right so x is going from minus 1 to 1 and if you do this calculation I have done the calculation and if my calculations are correct, the answer is coming out to be 32 by 15. Okay, so yeah, this is what I got. You can solve this and if you find this to be wrong answer, you can comment it out. So that's how you find the mass. Okay, now what is the next thing? Next thing is we want to find mx. To find mx, what do we have? So what is the formula for mx? It is y into density. And you do the same thing. So y into density and what are the limits of y? It is from x square to 1 and what are the limits of x? It is minus 1 to 1. So this is y square plus y and you take the order to be dy dx. And if you do the calculation, answer should come out to be 48 by 35. Okay, I've done that calculation just to save your time because this is easy to solve, right? This is y square plus y you can do the integration easily. So that's not a problem. So therefore, your y bar will be nothing but your mx upon m, which is 48 upon 35 upon, what was our m? Our m was 32 by 15. And if you do this calculation, the ratio, it is nothing but 9 by 14. And therefore, your center of mass x bar comma y bar is nothing but 0 comma 9 by 14. And if you want to do calculation, you can actually find my, my is x into density and that will come out to be zero. Okay, so this is how the symmetricity trick will help you to reduce your calculation. Okay, now let's go to the notion of moment of inertia and let's see an example on that topic. Uh, so before going to moment of inertia, yeah, I left this point. Okay, so first let's see the centroid. Now what is centroid? See whenever the density is uniform over that lamina or the plate, so whenever the density is uniform, that means what your density is some say constant k. Then whatever the point we get x bar comma y bar, we call that point to be the centroid of the object. Okay, so whenever the density is constant, we call it as a centroid, that point, that center of mass we call the centroid. That is one thing. Some authors or some people what they say, uh, whenever the question is on centroid, what to do is you take rho of x y equal to 1 you take the density to be 1 everywhere and then you do the calculation 
ओके सो दिस इज ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द थिंग और सम ऑथर से यू टेक डेंसिटी टू बी वन देन वॉट एवर द आंसर यू गेट दैट इज कॉल्ड एज द सेंट्रॉइड आई मीन दैट सेंटर ऑफ मार्क्स इज कॉल्ड एज द सेंट्रॉइड ओके सो मेनी टाइम्स दे विल नॉट से वॉट इज द डेंसिटी मेनी टाइम्स दे विल से द क्वेश्चन फाइन द सेंट्रॉइड ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट फाइन द सेंट्रॉइड ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट एंड वॉट इज दर ऑब्जेक्ट द रीजन आर और ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ द रीजन इट इज सेम थिंग वाई इक्वल टू वन वाई इक्वल टू एक्स स्क्वेर वॉट एवर वी हैड just now before this okay so this is the same thing which we have and they have asked you the centroid that means what in the solution you take your root to be one constant function one okay so that's how you find the centroid okay so if the centroid is asked do not forget root to be equal to one so the first homework problem for you is for the previous question this question which we did you have to tell me the centroid for this object again the job is easy your x bar is zero right because of the symmetric argument you only need to find y bar which is nothing but mx upon m and here also you will take your this row to be one okay so that's the first combo question whose answer you need to commit tell me what is your y component or to be precise what is your x bar comma y bar okay now let's go towards the moment of inertia okay so moment of inertia so moment of inertia or angular mass or rotational inertia of a rigid body what is that it's a quantity what does that quantity represent it will determine how much torque is needed for a desired angular acceleration about a rotational axis okay so center of mass was for the linear acceleration this is for the angular acceleration okay and about a rotational axis suppose if i want to find what is the moment of inertia along x axis so whatever the answer i get that will determine the torque needed for the angular acceleration about x axis suppose i want to find about along y axis so whatever the answer i get that answer or that number will represent the torque needed for the desired angular acceleration along y axis since we are in two dimensional so i will only say x and y when we are in 3d you have z axis as well okay so how will you find moment of inertia along x axis the formula is ix ix means moment of inertia along x axis you double integrate r now here you have x so you take y square rho of xy da so here you have a square there you only had x and y because you can say like xy was linear that's why xy here you don't have linear angular that's why the degree is no more one just vaguely i'm saying okay okay now what is iy it is double integration r you have x square since it was y here you will have x square rho of xy da where rho is same thing it represents the density so this is the formula for moment of inertia along x axis moment of inertia along x y axis there is one more notion which is called as a moment of inertia along origin okay or sometimes called as a polar moments which we represent by i not moreover i mean these are also called as your second moments first moments where your mx and my ix and x iy they are called as second moments and once you have second moments you can find the polar moments which is nothing but ix plus iy so that's about the polar moments there is one more thing what is the moment of inertia along a line okay so for that the formula is you multiply your density by r square of xy so what is r of xy it is the distance of xy from the line l you find that distance and you square it out and whatever you have that will be your integrand its product with density and you get the moment of inertia along the line so moment of inertia along x axis y axis around origin which is also called as polar moments and along the line okay now let's see one example so here is the example you need to find the moment of inertia about coordinate axis that means about x axis and about y axis and also about origin that means the polar moments of a thin triangular plate so first thing is you need to draw the region so what you do is you draw the region so what is y equal to x it is y equal to x is this line over here y equal to minus x is this line over here so on and you have y equal to 1 so this is my y equal to 1 this is my y equal to x and this is your y equal to minus x this is your y axis and x axis so this is the region you have and you need to find the moment of inertia okay cool so now we need to find ix right so first let's find ix what is the formula double integration of you have x so it is y square into density density is y plus 1 da over r now the question is which order you will choose okay now to choose the order 
you draw the line parallel suppose if you want dy dx is dy dx a good order over here answer is no why so because if you try to draw the line parallel to y axis here it is entering from a different line here it is entering from a different line that means you need to divide the region into two parts which we usually avoid just to save our time so let's go for the other way let's go for dx dy so if i choose dx dy will i need to split the region answer is no because if you try to choose this order now to find the limits of x you draw the line parallel to x axis so it is entering from y equal to minus x coming out from x equal to y so here the limits of x are nothing but it is entering from x equal to minus y leaving from x equal to y and what are the limits of y they are from 0 to 1 so y is going from 0 to 1 and now it is easy right if you do the calculation answer will come out to be 9 by 10 i mean i have done the calculation just to save your time i am writing the answer directly so you can do this calculation if you find this incorrect you can correct me in the comment section and what this 9 by 10 represent it represents the torque required for the angular acceleration about x axis okay now similarly you can find i y it is nothing but double integration y will go from 0 to 1 x will go from minus y to y it will be x square into the density dx dy and again if you do the calculation answer will come out to be 3 by 10 okay and uh, what this represent this represents the torque required for the desired angular acceleration about the y axis so which one is bigger 0.9 and 0.3 so this is bigger so here you need more torque okay so there's a comparison and finally what is i naught the moment of inertia about origin or the polar moment so you simply add them up 9 by 10 plus 3 by 10 which is nothing but 12 by 10 which is nothing but 6 by 5 so that's how you solve the problems on moment of inertia now let's go for the last one which is radius of gyration so radius of gyration so what is radius of gyration so of a body about an axis of a rotation so it's also defined about the axis of rotation it is defined as the radial distance to a point which would have the moment of inertia same as the body's actual distribution of mass okay or in another word how far from the axis how far from the axis the entire mass might be concentrated concentrated so as to give the same inertia okay so this is the notion of radius of gyration and the formula involves double integration to solve it so let me give you the formula so the formula is so radius of gyration about y axis so radius of radius of gyration about y axis is given by x bar equal to square root of i y upon m so that's what the formula so i y is same thing as that of moment of inertia m is your mass you take the square root and what is the radius of gyration about x axis it is nothing but your y bar equal to square root of i x upon m so you take square root of, for x axis you take square root of i x upon m for y axis you take square root of i y upon m this is how you can keep in mind and you know how to find this you simply take the square root you get the radius of gyration okay so now this is all of all the formulas you may need to solve the problems i have solved these problems using cartesian coordinates okay but you need not always solve using cartesian coordinates always keep in mind if you see some curved part in the domain or you see x square plus y square in the region in the integrand then you prefer polar coordinates okay never it's not a compulsion to solve by cartesian only okay so choose your coordinate system wisely okay now let me give you a homework problem well the homework is the same one i told at the start i gave you a problem to find the centroid okay so for that same figure you have to find the radii of gyration okay fine radii means you have to find both for about x as well as about y so i hope all the formulas and the example and the concept is clear if yes do not forget to like subscribe and share thank you